So Hello. hopefully, hopefully we didn't lose a bunch of people, but yeah, it was really giving me the business today, you guys, but I'm so glad we figured it out. And so uh, I'm, this is Steph from Belladonna Dyes and I have Margot Farnsworth here. Um, Hello. From, uh, <laughs> Margot Farnsworth has a, a YouTube channel and she's now put it to uh, Farnsworth or uh, Farnsworth. Margot's Dyes. Mar Margo's Dyes. So it's going to be really easy for you guys to find. After we're done here, I want you to go uh, subscribe to her YouTube channel. Okay, so I'm going to get my everything set up here. And Margot is going to give us an explanation of what we can expect today. Okay, so um, this is the shirt that you guys were asking me about on one of the other videos. And so last week, we watercolor dyed in a bunch of different methods on some shirts. So that we'd hopefully have something to work on today. And then we will be using um, stencils. Hopefully you picked up some stencils. If not, you can just follow along and there will be links down below. Uh, but they are Mylar stencils. And then we will be using paint. And I really like the Jacquard textile paint. Um, and we're using the Lumiere because it's beautiful. It has a little sheen to it. Um, and then you'll need your sponge stencil brush. And I'll be showing how to use that. And uh, then some tape to tape your stencil down in place. Um, but it's uh, it's pretty straightforward. But why don't we first take a minute and look at our dies from last week? All right, that sounds like a good idea. Um, a couple of mine definitely could use some stencil work to help spruce them up a little bit. So let's see here. So yeah, this I, went, I went stencil crazy. <laughs> I ordered quite a few too. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I'm not alone. It's so hard. You know, you get on Amazon and it's like, oh, that's a pretty one. Oh, that's a pretty one. So the shirt I pulled out first, this was the first one that I got going that was the bucket die, where um I had put it in a little container scrunched very tight. This is the cat Kohler method. And then I had the little gumdrop shaped ice, and this is strawberry skies only. And uh, there's some really cool details. I'm not going to stencil this one. I'm going to leave it as is because I'm really happy with it. Yeah, no, it's super cool. That's the one that you were putting on the food dehydrator, right? Yes. Yeah, so yeah. it got some heat on it. Yeah. So it really made the colors pop. I love it. All right. And so, what shirt do you have pulled out? Um, I. I Honestly, don't know. I, I think it was, uh, I feel like it was Imperial Purple. Oh, uh, I don't, one of the magentas, I don't remember. And then uh, gold. I, I really need to pay attention and write this. Was it, oh, I think it was Imperial Purple, Amethyst, and then one of the special order dyes um, that you recommended. Ginger Snap. Yeah, Ginger Snap. So this is, and I hadn't used it before that I can remember. So gin ginger snap is a fun one. I mean, it's a really nice bright orange and it has some like neon yellow over here. It's kind of cool. So I'm happy with it, but there are some areas that could maybe use a little stencil to maybe hide some blobby, you know, like some areas where it just is like blob of dye, <laughs> you know, a stencil over top can kind of, I think, I hope, you know, sort of a, uh, smooth it out a little bit but yeah i'm happy with the color combo that's gorgeous so this is a uh, ginger snap and then i used uh dye spin vintage purple which is one of my favorite purple and this was the spherical ice because we were playing around with different uh shapes of ice right um to see if they would do it I, and i i love that like that is so super cool looking it has a lot of layers to it well, this was the one that I did that um, rolling action that I talked about with the doing the scrunch where I kind of like was trying to kind of roll it as I went up. So it, I think it's got a little bit different feel from some of the other scrunches. So, okay. I just walked over to the, the rack to pull them out. So, yeah. So the rolling. And I, I have since watched back because I was enthralled in whatever I was doing. So I missed out on your rolling technique. I wasn't doing it at all, rolling like, like what you were, like 
you were demonstrating it and I missed out on it. So I, I understand now and it turned out really cool. So this is Thank my you. answer to the rolling method. Remember, I, I just was like, what? Roll it. And you were like, yeah, roll it. So I ended up just rolling mine and I was calling it like rolling uh, pretzels or making dough or, and this is how my rolling method turned out. That looks like a cinnamon, it looked like a cinnamon bun. Yeah. So I, I ro twist, ro rolled it, rolled it, and then like twisted it and then rolled it in a spiral. Like, a, yeah, like a cinnamon roll. And I don't think I'm going to stencil this one at this time either because it's, it's kind of cool. It's got yeah. you know, darker stuff going this. It's not my favorite in the world, but I don't think it needs a stencil. I'm going to see if maybe somebody likes it just as is. And then if nobody likes it, then, you know, maybe. I, don't, I just don't feel like it needs a stencil quite yet. But if I was to do stencils because of all the blue, I kind of feel like it kind of looks like deep, deeper water and then going up to the shore, like more shallow waters. So I feel like um, stencil, like ocean stencils would be cool on this one if I went that way. Yeah. Maybe some shells or something. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. Be beachy motif stencils. And then you guys, uh, just real quick, if, you, or if you're stenciling along with us, um, make sure that you don't have any fabric softener in your shirts. Um, because I, I don't want you to waste your paint and all that. So if you did your process and did fabric softener, like Mel soft or downy or whatever you use, you're going to have to rewash, I think. Right, Margo? You can't, you shouldn't have the. You might have some issues with the paint sticking to the fibers if you have fabric softener on. Yeah. So this one is the one that I did the kind of like random pleats. So I kind of just pleated up randomly. And uh, then I applied the dye in sort of random splotches, and it's four different Happy Cat colors. So there's Desert Storm and Black Magic and Torchwood, which I think is what gave us the little splash of green. And what was the fourth color? Oh, Rust Monster. Which Rust I think Monster. Rust Monster. Monster. I've never even heard of that color. Is that? Is that a happy cat dye? Yes, I did happy cat only on this one. Oh, wow. Jeez, she's got so many more. She just must be making so many dyes. I, that's such a cute name, and I don't know anything about it. So um, it's really pretty. So the rust monster is probably that kind of darker orangey color maybe in it. I think it's this reddish, um, this kind of reddish brown in through here. I think, honestly, I'm not positive, but I think maybe because yeah. the way I threw the dyes on, who knows? I know the purple came from Black Magic. Oh, really? Okay. I wasn't, I need to play around with them, but um, I, I mean, I love it. I, I wasn't expecting all that. I mean, it's like, it's purple and gold and it's beautiful and I love it. And it almost is perfect. Like it does not need stencils. Like it's pretty good. But yeah. well, so the um, I had done it uh, with the back side up. I should have turned it inside out, and I didn't. And this has, and I'm bringing it up to the camera. There's little surface speckles. Can you see those? It's like gritty, Let's and see. so we have to delay so it, it'll catch up, and I'll, I'll I'll see it here in a second. And, and I like the entire back has some of that going on. And my idea for this shirt was that I was going to do that uh, faded and worn industrial grunge sort of thing. And so I think that the, the, this grittiness that's on here will actually work well with that. So I think I am going to stencil this. Yeah, and no, I, took I, that I just, just now, I don't want to interrupt you, I, but I just like, I just saw the speckles. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I see it now. Yeah. Um, yeah, and there there's it's like the entire back has that. Um that's a bummer. It it is. Um so um yeah, and I, I keep forgetting to turn my items at inside out and um I am learning through pain <laughs> things. But it, because on the inside there's like maybe a few minor speckles, but it's so much better than the outside. Um, so there's a little bit in there, but, um, 
Yeah, so I ha I picked up some stencils that are just textures. And so I thought I would go over this with some of those texture stencils with some dark like blacks and browns and maybe even like some like uh, greens and blues that are kind of like that that when uh, copper gets that patina on it. So that was sort of the idea I had for it. So this will be one of the ones I think I'll work on tonight. No, I'm, I, that, I mean, that's really fantastic. I'm, I'm super curious about it. I mean, it's a bummer because like from a distance, like that shirt is really amazing. And even with the speckles, it gives character, but I, I, I totally get it. Like, darn it. You know, I don't know. I've been so far, I've been really lucky with my dyeing experience. I haven't gotten a whole bunch of speckles you know, sometimes like, okay, one color and you guys are all going to be like, yeah, uh, shiitake mushroom. I, it's, I, I just, I can't work with it because it, it will speckle on me no matter what I do. So very frustrating. So I, I want to say that this is kind of my answer to your last shirt. This is dragon's dragon egg by happy cat tie dye. And I did the sinew lines and then around the sinew lines, it broke, uh, split down into this really beautiful, uh, like, um, like mint green and kind of chartreuse is out and then into, uh, oranges, peach, yellow, red. Um, this color reminds me a lot for those of you that have it is, uh, citrus got real. It's, it's almost identical to that but citrus got real does not break down into this beautiful mint green. But I just wanted to kind of show like my, I think kind of how we started doing the shirts, you know, we did that one, this one, that one. And then um, your apron there is, Oh, please tell me you're not going to stencil that. that is, well, I mean, no. stencil it, but it's so pretty. <laughs> Well, th so I pulled this one out because this is my answer to what you have on the table right now. So I used that that pleating tool and tried to kind of pleat things up and then sinewed those lines. Um, this one I did in wand wood, which is a happy cat color. That is so pretty. Like, I mean, it's just organically perfect the way it is. Now, I could understand you wanting to stencil it, but at the same time, it's like, oh, it's so perfect. I'm not sure that I am going to stencil it. I'm yeah. kind of on the fence on that. <laughs> I, I mean, if you did, like maybe the bottom right corner where it's, it kind of has like that, that bo like if you put like a mandala down like one or something, but like that, it would, it doesn't need it. It's so beautiful. I love it. Thank you. So Crystal, yeah. just real quick, I just, Crystal, um, I want to say thank you so very much for your donation to the channel. I appreciate you so much. Thank you for your generosity. I just wanted to make sure to say that out loud really quick while we were, I, before I, it vanishes off my screen. Okay. I love that apron. It's perfect for this time of year. It has a, just such a nice, soft pastel. And I am not going to stencil the dragon egg because it has the sinew lines. There's enough going on. It doesn't need it. It's um, a gorgeous shirt. It doesn't need anything. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's fine just the way it is. Okay. Um, now, okay, now, now, uh, when you sent me that one, um, you weren't necessarily feeling it at the time. Has it grown on you yet? Because I think that is beautiful. I love that shirt. It, it's grown on me a little bit. Well, and, uh, so one of my tie-dye friends, Regina was telling me that, um, Apparently, tie-dye is out in the New York fashion world, and pastels are in. So this is the end now. There you but go. tie-dye is not out. I, I reject that notion. <laughs> <laughs> It'll never go out of style. I mean, it went crazy during the whole pandemic, and, you know, it made a, it made a really big comeback. But, uh, no, that you're gorgeous. Uh, I, so this, what color this is the one that I... Oh, this was the one that I did the extreme tall, deep scrunches in that tube. So I pulled it. So I was trying to get the same effect as the bucket dies that I do, only this was on a rack. And I used dye spin teal green, which is one of my favorites. And I think dusty purple. I love it. I mean, it's, it's, it's just so pastel and so perfect. And that big flower in the bottom right corner is, it's just phenomenal. So 
It's got a flower here, a flower here, and a flower there. Um, and that's where, when I had laid the shirt down, I just picked up a handful there, picked up a handful there. And so I made sure, like, that was the placement of those points, those mm -hmm. tall deep points. So um, I got to watch the playback and watch how you did it. I, I was in my own world and I missed all of it live. But I would like to do maybe in the future, again, just like let's focus and let's do just a bucket die and, and really go through the steps again. Because I think you've achieved some real beauty there. And because we did so many different variations, it kind of got lost in translation, you know? So if you would like to in the future, I, I want to like, I want to do that again together because sure. because I, I got a bucket. <laughs> <laughs> I got a bucket and I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> so I pulled this one out. This is the one that I went ahead and did the, um, the, I stenciled on this earlier today with the decolorant paste. Oh yeah. So so this is the one that I'll be ironing out later. Um, it's got several mandalas on it. But since you pulled yours out, I figured we could kind of do a side by side on that. Yeah. So this was the one where you made, well, maybe it wasn't. On mine, I was trying to imitate yours and do like a bunch of little little spirals. Yeah. Is that is that the one you did the little spirals on? It, it is. You got better spirals than I did. I, well, I only I really only achieved just that one. And then maybe in the blue, but they're they're hidden because it's all just blue. But I, it kind of reminds me of like uh, the like a, the peninsula, you know, like you've got this land mass here and then uh, a little bit of like a, the, the land bridge over to another land mass and then all this is water so for this one for me stencil wise it's all about sea life on this this guy yes that would be really cool do you remember what you said to me in your message about how you felt about uh, you you had me cracking up it i think what did you say it it offend it offends your eyes or something. Like that. It assaulted my eyeballs. <laughs> yeah, your your eyes were assaulted by this shirt. I was laughing so hard. That was really cute. It's optically concussive. <laughs> I I love it. I think it's great. I think um, uh, I think the color combination though it's it's perfect for what we're going to be doing, but. In, in in other applications, I don't I I don't think they should go together. <laughs> well, that that sky blue, I didn't realize how much it was going to take over. I didn't realize how strong it is. Yeah, um, it's, so it's a good one. I will keep that in mind for the future when I really want blue. <laughs> I feel like it was the first time I've ever used it. Uh, I, I can't recall ever using it before. And yeah, I mean it's a it's a nice. It's a nice color. I have a hard time with the blues. The blues are not my favorite because they don't split. They're either like super navy or kind of like glow, like glowing blue. Um, or, you know, like with ice dyeing anyways, like turquoise, actual turquoise. It doesn't ice dye very well. You know, so I have a hard time with the blues, but I'm liking the sky blue and I'm liking the layering effect on this one. It has a real like crackle to it, which I'm, I'm not used to seeing in my uh, scrunches. So I, I think it's pretty cool. So um, well, that was why I developed that dye that I call Blue's Clues, where I took a little bit of each blue pigment I have to try to create a blue that would actually give me split. Yeah, no, you're, I love your Blue's Clues. It's, it's just, it's hard because blue being, you know, kind of a primary, um, it's, it, you know, it's just challenging. Okay. So I'm looking at <clears throat> your shirt that you've pulled out, I think. So, okay. So for me, maybe the one that I should work on would be my strawberry skies. I've got a lot of, it has nothing to do with the dye, but I've got a lot of, um, really strange saturation issues and out of all of the shirts if I should stencil it it would be this one I don't know what happened it almost seems like on the pre-wash like something but it's too uniform but there's just these really there's like these splotch areas that like dye didn't saturate into the fabric and it, it's just weird to me so 
while you're doing that one, I think, yeah, okay, I can see it on the screen. Like there's this whole like row of, of really white saturation and it really turned out pretty though. I love this color so much. It, yeah. It's such a fun color. It's just, it's, it's like magic in a jar, but yeah, like this whole stripe and it probably is nothing. It, it probably had nothing to do with my pre-wash. It may be that like these little bits were like sticking out of the, the rack, you know, and it wasn't getting good saturation, but the rest of it is fantastic. Okay. So, okay. Where do we start? So the, choose the stencils we want and you guys I went nuts I just I like I couldn't stop I I'm gonna have to like maybe I'm gonna have to return some stuff but you know it's really hard to see when you're shopping and the thumbnails are really small like what you're actually getting but what I've noticed and I don't know um so some stencils have a lot of detail in them, like all the little pieces are in there. And, and that's what you're looking for. Unless you're going to uh, like do really detailed hand painting like a fish, let's say. If it just is the shape of a goldfish. Unless you're going to paint scales and eyeballs and lips, you're just going to have like a very juvenile looking um, imprint on your shirt. And I didn't realize that till after I had already ordered a couple of sets that some are a lot more detailed and better than others. And one of the things that I found with some of the, the really detailed pencils, um, I bought, I bought these trees and the trees are so detailed. They're like these crazy fine details in there. I'm not sure how well that's going to show up when we stencil on fabric. So some of these would work better stenciled on wood, but I don't know if you can see these really fine details in the center of the trunk there. I, I think those might end up getting Oh, you got the Tree of Life set. I was looking at those. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. But oh like here, I had to clear out a bunch of little leaves. So you want to check your stencils before you use them. Sometimes there are little bits that are stuck after the die cut that didn't pop free. So just yeah. make sure you get those out. But look at that heart. I oh thought that God, was so good. That. That. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think that I think the detail will show up. I do. I mean, I, I what do I know? I'm about to do this for the first time, but I, I well, okay, yeah, so right. You got a lot of tie-dye stuff going on. Um, look at the birds and the leaves and, well, it's a good one. And I think you know the detail is there. So that's that's what matters. So I know I was looking at that Tree of Life one. So um, I got the heart. This one uh, I wrote down seven by seven inch and it was $6 and 49 cents. And this is the heart that Margot has. And I think it was on that shirt that you were wearing last week. Um, yeah. And I got it super affordable and uh, it's, it's a great stencil. It's just the right size. Like for instance, on this shirt, I think that would look really great. And then, um, and then I bought this pack of peony flowers. It was all peony and I had a little post-it note, but I don't know what, but I mean, it was like $11 and there's 25 pieces, but it's all peony flowers. And I thought that's going to be gorgeous. Like, especially on like, that's this watercolor style type shirt having, you know, peonies because these flowers almost look like peonies. Um, I'll know more when I use it, uh, but again, I'm going to leak this down below. I just, I want, so I spent almost two days online and I want to save you guys from having to do that. Like if this is a good set, I'm going to let you know. And if it's a bad set, I'm going to let you know, I'm going to, you know, save you, <laughs> save you from yourself. Okay, so something that you want to keep in mind when you're ordering stencils or when you're looking at stencils. So something like this, this is going to almost completely obscure your tie-dye. This is going to be a lot of paint. And then, so something like this is going to be better. So it will give you that texture, but it'll still preserve the tie-dye underneath. Okay. Oh, I see what you mean by texture now. I see what you're saying. It's like, 
yeah so it's going to be like an overlay um this little one that came in the set i guess i would consider that a texture like um it's it looks like tetris or whatever and then if you cover the whole shirt like if you systematically went one by one by one you know and you're gonna add a, a depth to it yeah those are cool i didn't see those i wish these were larger i thought they were much bigger stencils so i'm kind of disappointed because these are exactly what i wanted this definitely has that kind of like worn industrial there's like a tire track and and a grate and so i thought these were going to be really fun but they're so tiny <laughs> yeah well yeah though what are those the like the five five and a half inch and, and then the one one is like what the 10 inch or whatever but yeah no because it's got i see honeycomb tire treads that looks like a like the storm drain um, but you'd be at it all day because you'd have to like pick it up, move it over, pick it up, move it over. Well, um, so what, what I'm going for with the effect on this one is it, I'm going to be doing sort of incomplete stencils so that it will have that sort of worn look. So I'm not going to be covering this entire thing. I'm going to be stenciling in just an area of it that will kind of model out. So I'm going to look for the area that I want to cover the most that has like some of the funkiest stuff going on. It's like, I'm gonna leave this, cause this is really pretty right here for the colors. But you know, like this is a little funky and I'm gonna put it sort of at a jaunty angle there. Yeah. And, and you um, don't have to cover the entire square. You can just like do, you know, uh, two inches of it or six inches, you know, you can, you know, you don't have to cover the whole thing. So what I use for my palette, is I use lids from uh, like takeout containers and yogurt containers. It's got a little lip on it, but it's nice and flat so that I can put, um, I'll often have multiple colors on together so that I can take my brush and dip it in some different colors. So I've got like on the brush itself, I'll have a few different colors. So I have pulled out here um, an aqua green and an orange and yellow and then I've got some brown and black and some uh and some white and I'm gonna put a little bit of each one on my tray here and yeah. you, you've got all the colors I do because that that's what I tend to do <laughs> <laughs> no I no listen I'm the same exact way I bought I bought two packs I bought the one that you suggested with the all the metallics so it's, is it, you say Lumiere or Lumiere? Oh, it's from, it's I, don't from know. I don't know either. It's from Jacquard. Uh, they're metallic acrylic paints. And it says it's for um, synthetic fabrics, canvas, wood, suede, rubber, basically like just about everything. And this one came with the gold. This is the one I did the video on gold, copper, bronze um metallic olive green silver and pearlescent white so that was the one kit that i got and then the other one that i got and I was pretty bummed out but I, I was okay because like all the lids were popped off and they're just closed off with this little foil paper and i'm so glad that none of them bursted but this one has uh, other colors in it and i don't i don't know if i'm going to keep it because it has like pearlescent blue pearlescent magenta which is awesome but i'm not sure how much that'll show up and uh pearlescent violet which is really pretty and one thing i wanted to ask you because you might know it had this um i think it called it was called extender let me see here it is it says flowable extender do you know anything about that is that something you're supposed to like add to the paint well, if you if you want to, if you want to get a little bit more transparent effect, um, so, because it is going to thin it out a little bit. Um, but I think also, depending on the texture of your fabric, you may want to use some of that. If you're if you're on a fabric that's kind of got a real three D to it, you might need to thin it out a little bit. Okay. Uh, so, but I wanted to show something here. Is so this was actually the first set of the jacquard that I got, and it's a bunch of little bottles that you can get. And so that that's actually a nice way to start. Um, but these these go it goes pretty quickly. Um, and 
the white, when you're mixing colors together, the white is not that strong against the other colors. It will get eaten up and the black is crazy strong. So the black, if you mix that in next to other things, use just a little bit because it just takes over. Okay. Um, why would you add black? Because I've, I've never done this before. So, I mean, uh, t explain to me, like, what would be the reasoning for why we would want to add black? Just well, to so up, or? Here, here's my palette. And with what I'm going to do, I want to create texture. Okay. So I'm going to use a little bit of black to create texture. And before I start painting, I want to put, I took the flexible cutting boards and I tape two of them together here, but I put this inside the shirt so that as I'm stenciling, the paint doesn't bleed through to the front of the shirt. Yes, that's a wonderful idea. I had some already pre-made up, but I can't find them. So I'm gonna make them again, but um, yeah, I'm gonna use the, the dollar store cutting boards, just like you said, and then I have, it's just painter's tape. I don't think it matters, but I'm gonna just tape them together so I have a bigger surface. Or, I think you could also just put some cardboard down in there. Sure, yeah, just something as long as there's a barrier between the layers. Yeah, because um, we're, as you're putting the paint on, it's going to soak through and it'll go on to the back of your project. So we need to get something in between the layers. Um, okay, and now I've got, um, I'm going to put a little bit of tape on a couple of spots on the outside of the stencil to hold it in place. Um, I did pick up some spray tap that you can get for stencils. I, I sprayed that onto the back of one of my stencils to try playing with that, um, but it's not one of these stencils. So um, I'll... I'll yeah, oh, okay. okay. So, okay, I get it. So uh, for, for the stencil to keep it from shifting around. Right. Um, in there. Okay, so I just put my um board up under there and so i what i did is i and you guys i'm struggling so hard because i normally do the uh, mill soft ironing this shirt and even working with it is really difficult because it is stiff as a board and i don't like it at all i swear by mill soft or something you got to put something in there in my opinion like i try iron this shirt it, it just it would it didn't want to do it so what i had to do is take like a water mister bottle and mist it with water get it damp again in order to get some good steam oh, somebody said that um they did fabric painting years ago and they put sandpaper between the layers as a barrier but it would keep the fabric from moving that well i mean That's a cool I, idea I, See that? Yeah, I would kind of grip and give it some grit. Okay. okay. I mean, so I'm starting to I'm starting to load my paintbrush here. Okay. All right. So I'm so far behind you. Okay. So I've got my um I've got my lid. I'm gonna uh what do you what color do you think? Um should I do metallic gold on this strawberry skies? Let me see. What are what did I have again? I've got because I don't think it would be real pretty. Which one? Silver would be pretty. Silver. Okay. Oh, yeah. I got it right there. Because I don't... I mean, as much as I think, ooh, purple, but I don't think it'll show up. I think it's it's too... It'd be too dark. Um, but you could take the silver and you could put just a dot of the purple in it and make it like a really light lavender silver. Ooh. Well, I think that's... a uh, For my first time, I'm going to keep it simple, right? <clears throat> Not to overcomplicate things. Okay, so, all right. Okay, so I've got my silver. And I have pearlescent white, too. Does, I know you said something about white. Uh, does the pearlescent white show up as well as the silver does? Uh, it does. It does. But if you add any colors to it, it will be very easily taken over. See, I just barely dabbed into the black there, and it's just taken over from my other colors. Look at Margo getting her Bob Ross on right now. Happy little sponge brushes. <laughs> okay. Happy little spread marks. <laughs> so I think I'm I'm just gonna I'm gonna keep it real simple. I'm gonna start with silver on mine and then um I'm just not gonna pour a whole bunch in there. And I'm shaking it really well first. 
And then, um, I don't know if you guys saw, I didn't really talk about it, but I, I bought a box of these little sponge brushes and they came in like these really itsy bitsy little ones, which I think could be good for like little detail work. But this is this, just so you know, like this is what you can expect and I will have the links down below. Um, I, I think I already put them in last uh, week's thing, but um, I mean, look at how cute that is. It's like a little gumdrop on a stick. Okay. okay. I'm going to set this off the side so I don't spill it on my shirt, though. Yes, definitely. Okay, so I'm watching. Okay, so um, so the motion that you want to do is you're going to be going straight down at the fabric, and it's called pouncing. Because if you try to brush side to side, you could, like, make the paint poop under the edges. And you don't want to overload your brush. You, you would rather go light than heavy because you have too much paint in your brush, that's also gonna cause it to goop underneath the edges and not give you a clean stencil. So it's better to start with a light pass and work darker. So I'm just gonna start, there I go, straight down at the stencil. And it's, it's just an up and down pouncing motion. Does it dry pretty quick? Like, like do, I mean, do you need to work fast because it's gonna, no, you know, you to, no, you don't need to work that fast. Okay. So can you guys see what I'm doing? Should I try to... Well, no, I, I, can do. I can totally see what you're doing. Okay. All right. And um, uh, you have the stencil down and you're pouncing. Woo! That might have been... Whoa! Come on now, paint. I just put way too much on there. Whoops. Well, if you're going to be doing the whole shirt, it's probably going to end up using about a third of the jar. Oh, really? Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, okay. I just used a lot of my paint. At least an eighth of it just poured out much more than I wanted to. So this is this is what you I did that, you guys. Okay. Oh, and then I just didn't want to do that, but I just put my sponge in there. Okay. So I think I'm going to use that heart stencil that you have used in the past because I really like it and I think it's pretty um and I'm gonna I think I'm just gonna place it like right because I want to what I'm trying to do is try to cover up that sort of the flawed areas and yeah. oh let's see where do I put here I'm gonna put a little just a little piece of tape just to kind of I'm yeah, put put a couple pieces of tape on on like opposite corners so that it doesn't twist on you. Okay. And then I've got my I put my um, dollar store cutting boards underneath, so it's going to um, help keep from it bleeding through to the back side. Now, um, how does this stuff work? So we just let it dry? Does it have to be ironed in to set or? Yes. Yep. It, um, so yeah, after it, after it dries, you want to wait 24 hours for it to really nice and set. And then yes, it gets ironed. Um, and it, the directions are on the bottle. Um, and okay. I think it's like with um, the highest temperature that your fabric is appropriate for your fabric. And I, um, what I do is I lay a towel over the top, like a cotton, uh, flat cotton dish towel or a linen dish towel. I'll lay on top of it when I go to iron it so that the iron will move smoothly over the top. And so you set it down and you hold it for 10 seconds and then you pick it up and move it to the next area. And I'll even kind of wiggle it around so that the, the pattern of the iron doesn't leave any areas not fully ironed. Okay. Yeah. Cause that was another one of my questions is, do you have a, uh, like a special iron dedicated to ironing this type of like, your like the decolorant, you know, like. The... I, I do not, but boy, I am now thinking about it because after ironing that decolorant, I went to iron something else at the stench. Oh yeah. It, it had permeated my iron, even though it didn't seem to um, affect the fabric. But it just smells really bad. Oh, it's terrible. It's it is the worst uh, egg, rotten egg type. Like even worse, it's, 
It's like perms. We talked about this. Like, remember everybody getting your hair permed in the 80s and the 90s? It's like that on steroids. It's so bad. All right. Now, um, when you're doing yours, like, what is the level of saturation? Like, should I be seeing a little bit of my dye showing through, or do I want it to be pretty heavily saturated looking? Or <laughs> It, it all depends on the look you're going for. Okay. So on some of the stuff that I've done, I've done um, kind of a lighter, so it's sort of a speckly effect, and you can see the the, the textile through it, like the pattern. Um, and, but then on some other things I've done, I've wanted something that was just really solid. Um, you know, so maybe on what you're doing, you'll really want that heart to pop. So you might want to make sure that it's, that you kind of go over it a few times, so, like, multiple thin layers, like I said, are better than a thick layer. Yeah. How are you doing that? Layer it up. Yeah. Okay. That totally makes sense. Gosh, I haven't stippled or, yeah, I think that's a stippling. I haven't done this um, long. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. And I, I thought, oh, my gosh, I put way too much on here. It's like, look, I've barely even done the whole heart. And I, that glob I put on is already almost taken up. But I did uh, stencils all around the baby the baby room back well gosh twenty five years ago. Last time I've done anything like like this much. I mean, I did the stencil lady with the decolorant, but I I just sprayed it on. I I didn't like do any painting work or anything fun. Now, when it comes to cleaning up afterwards, like these stencils, uh. Does it require a chemical cleaning or just soap and water? What has been your experience, Margot? Uh, just just soap and water. They clean up really easy. Um, if the paint dries on there, it helps to let them sit in the sink in some water. But um, I actually use my sponge brush to clean them. And I'll just, in, in the water, I'll just swirl my brush gently over the top. You just have to be careful on things with fine detail doing that because the brush can catch on those. So you just want to be very careful and maybe you just run it under water using your thumb to clean the paint off. But I have like the very first stencils. Let me close that and show you. Yeah, because that's, that's what you mentioned about the, the where I was trying to say like you want to try to choose some stencils that have a little detail in them versus just a big goldfish blob. But then, yeah, when it comes to washing them, uh, if it's got a lot of detail, you can snag that and rip the detail right off. Yes. And, and also it can end up uh, catching on other stencils, which can be a real pain. Um, and just, you know, just be careful because that, that can end up folding up on you. But this one, um, I've used this stencil probably 20 to 30 times at this point. And it's got some paint that won't come off at this point, but as long as those edges are clean, I'm, I still get a really nice, good stencil out of this. I think I might have that stencil. I or love this one. Maybe not, but something really similar. Let me see, I just, let me see. Yeah, or no, similar, not the same. I almost just poured a silver paint, but, but just a nice big mandala. Um, oh, that's a nice one. I like that. Yeah, similar, different, but similar. And uh, I have a spiral. Well, the spiral that we did is the two for underneath. I'm not happy with that. But I think if I stick it right down in the center of that spiral, you're not even going to know because the stencil is just going to take over. So I need to, I was really concerned about that amount of paint that I poured in there. And look, you guys, I already, it already soaked it all up already. So I'm going to give it a shake, 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 shake. And then I'm going to pour a little bit on there. I'm going to try to be a little bit, uh, uh oh, oh, wait, is this a different bottle? Wait a minute. No, this is it. The, the cardboard part is stuck to it. There we go. Oh, I hate when that happens. Yeah. Well, some of them are like that. I think it's maybe if they've sat on the shelf for a little while. Oh, for sure. Okay. All right, I'm going to check how this is doing underneath here. I'm going to pick up a corner. I'm oh. leaving this, this tape down here, but I just want to look and see. Oh, yep. I like that. See how that's covering up the, the grit that's there? I think I'm going to take this stencil off. I like that. 
Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, you didn't have to do, like, the whole, you know, the whole stencil. You could just do a little bit and give it some, like, uh, like tire burn. It's not tire, but I don't know what I'm going to do. I wish I had gloves on right now. Like, I can't get the cardboard to go back in, so I'm just going to remove it. Which, or, no, it's got rubber cement. Dang it. Darn it. Let me see. What can I poke it with? Oh, I'll just poke it with an old dirty cloth. So it's, it's, uh, that, you know, that little cardboard thingy, it's got rubber cement, so it's not letting it go. But at the same time, it's causing me issues. I'm just shoving it back in there and I'm using a dirty, uh, thingy, uh, wipe from the garbage can. All right. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Like totally look at that. Just, and what are you using? Just black? Wait. No, this was, I, I've been sort of mixing um, as I go on my brush. So I've been using a little bit of everything. So it's got texture to it. There's green and black and brown. There's a little bit of red in there. So it's, it's definitely got some texture, but it's darker than what's around it. Yeah. No, I mean, it's super, it's very, like you said, it's industrial. That's, it's really cool. Because you got the, like, the beautiful softness of the watercolor ice dye underneath it. And then you're, like, taking it to the, giving it the edge, the edgy, um, that, like, factory, warehouse, grunge. I don't know so, what, you're, what I'm trying so to people, say. So people, were at, or people have been talking about what kind of paint. Oh, and yeah. I've, worked with a, I've worked with a number of different kinds of textile paint. I picked up some of the um, speedball screen printing ink, and that stuff is really thick and goopy. It's not appropriate for this. Um, uh, and then I tried, um, there's like the folk art stuff that you can get, and you can add a textile medium to it. This is nicer. When this washes up, this washes, uh, right after you finish it and you iron it, it's gonna feel kind of stiff. But this has been washed many times. And like when I run my hand over this, I can't even feel the paint anymore. Um, I guess maybe I can sort of feel it a little bit, but it's softened up a lot. No, that's um, and on this one, I used um, a little bit of gold, but it's mostly brown. Um, so this isn't, it's got little touches of metallic here and there, but the whole thing isn't metallic. Yeah, no, I, I love that shirt. That I, I think that's the one you were wearing when I was like, whoa. Yeah. I mean, look at how pretty that is. I mean, it, it, it it's really, it's given that, you know, I'm not saying it's humdrum, but, you know, just the, the typical watercolor scrunches that we see, and it's taken it and turned it up a notch, like, totally you know it's already beautiful and then it's just even more beautiful that's what i'm hoping is going to happen with this one now i'm concerned because some of my outer regions are really heavy so i think i'm going to have to because I, I i don't want it to be like oh the outer edge is really saturated with uh, paint and then like oh what happened in the middle but I know if I try to pick it up and check, then I'll never get it back down. Well, that that's why you pick up one corner. So you leave one, like, because you've got, did you tape all four corners? I did. So just lift up the bottom two corners and peek underneath. Okay. I'm feeling pretty good about this, right? Like, I feel, I feel pretty good about the saturation now but i would say it took me three three good stamps to <clears throat> get it because I, I i think i want this to be a kind of a heavy you know heavy look on this heart now the other ones maybe i can go a little lighter and they can fade out but i wanted to make sure all the edges on this one were good so now, she is. Somebody was just asking in the uh, chat if you were bleaching. This is we are painting right now. Um, we will bleach. Uh, I've already applied jacquard de color to a different shirt because it has to dry before you can iron it. But I've done that um, earlier today, and then I'll be ironing it so you guys can see how the pattern develops. Yeah, Margo was awesome. She she did some uh, pre gaming for us because you have to let the 
you have to let the decolorant dry. It, it says overnight or 24 hours. So she, she did it ahead of time to show you. And also I can't iron on my table. I'd have to walk, we'd have to like move and which is fine. But yes, we are going to be showing the decolorant. Uh Oh, I stenciled. Oh, well, I stampered off my stencil. That would be one nice thing about this stencil that had just a little bit of a wider edge. Well, and so you can use um, the, the tape, like the, uh, you can just put a border around yours to make the border wider with just some tape. So anywhere where it gets close to the edge, just lay some tape down there. Good point. Good, good point. Did not think about that at all. Okay, so... Um, well, I'm curious. I'm going to pull it up. I just want to see. It looks like you've got really good coverage. Ooh. It's exciting. It's the best part. Yeah. Oh, that is awesome. I oh, love that's it. that's beautiful. I love it. I love it. Let me see. Oh, I that's gorgeous. Side so it can kind of dry off or... I don't, I just don't want to touch it on anything. So I'll set this. So what, what I did with mine, I just took that piece of tape and I taped it right to the edge of the table. So it's hanging off. And then at the end, I'll just take them all and take them off to wash them. Well, that's a really good idea. Do I want to do another heart somewhere else or would that would just be too many hearts on one shirt? Well, you could do another heart or you could do another shape. So, cause you have those mandalas. Yeah, and I've got those awesome mandalas. Let's see. I just want to make sure I don't set it anywhere where I'm going to, like, forget and then put, you know, a T-shirt down two seconds later and scoop up paint. Um, I think I'm just going to put it here in this little dish. I'm going to tape it to the edge of this dish. Okay. So, yeah, I've got all those cool mandalas, and I've got them in big size, little size. Let's see. Oh, I got two packs that came today I haven't even opened yet. <laughs> There, I mean, seriously, I went nuts. And like I said, I'm going to have to, well, I, I mean, I don't necessarily have to, but I'm going to have to consider, I like to hoard stuff, you guys. I mean, you know, if I find something good, they're only $11, which lets a lot of money. But in the tie dye world, the, the amount of money that we spend on dye, that's like this whole pack was one jar of dye or two. Well, this, that these are octopuses. Um, but I, you know, as I move forward and I make videos with this, I'll, I would definitely put the links down below. Let's see. Oh, these are tiny. I don't even know what you call this size. This is the smallest pack yet, or well, they seem a smaller. No, they're the three inch size. These are all butterflies. Ooh. Oh, fun. I got a butterfly one that, um, it's, I'll show you. Or, I, I was looking at the butterflies too. Or in insects, I guess. I mean, not necessarily all butterflies. I think there might be. So this is what I was talking about, you guys. So like this, this stencil doesn't have any detail on the inside. So when you stencil it, it's just going to be a blob of silver paint. Whereas this one has some detail. So I was noticing that some sets are just, I think they are for children and they don't have any detail and you don't want to buy a whole pack with no detail, right? You want to have a little bit of something in there. Um, oh, oh, that's fantastic. Where's, yeah. the, where's the glitter coming from? Oh my God. <laughs> so that's the, uh, that's just the backing paper on it. But, well, um, yeah. This, this is really fun because one of the things that I was thinking about doing with it is um, so I would start, I would do a rainbow across it. So I would start at one end with yellow and just work my way through the rainbow, just paint, adding different colors as I go across. Yes. And you can do that with like those, those butterflies that are just a large open shape. You can do some gradations of color in those and have fun with them. No, that's true. You're absolutely right. Like, I'll put it back up again. Like, start with the wings, like up here at the top. Like, start with uh, magenta and then purple and then into, you know, the oranges and then down into the blues. And but that that's what I, I'm trying to say is, 
you know, pay attention and then think about what you're going to do. Some of you are really talented and you can hand paint all the variations. I can't, I'm not, I mean, I'm just not, I'm just not that talented. Um, but some of these little butterflies, there's dragonflies in this set. I think this is a good set. Oh yeah. Look at that one. Ooh, the detail on those, uh, dragonfly wings. Impeccable. So I'm definitely going to link this one. I'm really happy with it. Some of them I'm not so happy with. Like in this butterfly, look at the detail in that little butterfly. And this pack was like 11 bucks, you guys. So, I mean, look at the detail in those wings. Anyways, I'm going to link this one. Um, because some sets are better than others. I definitely ended up with some children's style. And another thing that's really cool is it comes with this ring. So I can just put them all on this ring and scroll through them as I want and keep everything neat and tidy. So I kind of feel like, ooh, wouldn't a dragonfly look cool like on the sleeve or something? Hmm. Or a butterfly over here. Because to me, this particular shirt looks like a bunch of flowers. So uh, I, like that. I think that, um, you know, having some butterflies, mandalas, I think I have one more stencil set coming and it's uh, uh, just like um, wildflowers. Like I thought like down at the bottom, just to, like the whole bottom could be wildflowers. And then, you know, up on top, like little insects, bumblebees. And okay. What is this one? Anyways, you guys. Yeah. I, I, I wish you the best of luck. You're all going to get in there stencil hunting and never get out. I already know it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's an example. This one is uh, 16 pieces, 6 by 3, or so 6 inches by 6 inches. And this is the flower. I've marked it as flowers. Eleven ninety nine for 16 stencils. And these are big ones. And they also came with the ring. Oh, yeah. So, like, look, you guys. Look at the sunflower on that. Sunflower. Bumblebee. So imagine if you do a shirt that's gold, green, blue, earthy. Um, you do a bumblebee and a sunflower and a butterfly. Oh, look at the hummingbird, you guys. I love hummingbirds. So this is a really good set. I'm definitely going to link that down below. And it has different size hummingbirds and different, different kinds of um, dragonfly. And then look, this one's got a whole bunch of little like flowers and then little dragonflies. And so you could put like a little butterfly. Great potential going on here with this one. I just opened it. I'm super excited. <laughs> okay. I love those dragonflies. Yes, I'll, I'll probably end up getting that pack too. Not that I need more stencils. Uh, well, you know, that's just it. No, of course you don't, but remind me and I'll send you the link because it's a good one. <laughs> it's good quality and that ring, they got that uh, cut out, which makes it um, nice, you know, for storage purposes. Okay. All right. So I've got that beautiful heart on there. Now, where's my mandalas? Okay. So, oh. So I've got the little mandalas, which I want to put like a little one. So in, it's my understanding that when things are done in threes, they look better. So, you know, you don't want to just have one and two, like one here, one there, or you could. But I want to see if I can find, I, th I thought I saw one of these bigger ones that had hearts in it, which would tie in with the big heart. This, this is a really good stencil set, you guys. This is the one I did the video on. You will not go wrong with this particular set. I mean, look at look at how pretty those are. Let's see. Some are square, and then most of them have the round shape. But, you know, a square one, if you do it like an off-center type, it's not going to be like a square right on your shirt. You, you twist it a little bit, you'll get some variation in it. Yeah, these are awesome. Okay, like that. That kind of has a heart. It kind of looks like a snowflake. Oh, yeah, I can't wait. Now I'm just going to be stenciling everything. 
I'm going to have to go revisit my over dye pile and see if stencils can't be the way. Okay. Well, I don't know. I kind of like that one. I'm going to go with that one. Okay. So I wanted to show how to do a block print as well. And so I'm going to look through my blocks and see if there's something that'd be appropriate for me to just block right on here. Like the stamp? Yeah. Yeah. That, that would be a really good demonstration. Okay. So I think I'm going to do like that. And then, gosh, I thought I had more of the little mandalas that were... Well, this one's kind of cool. It's not really round. Okay, so now I'm going to move my um, cutting boards under from underneath over to the other corner here. Oh, I wonder if... Margo, what do you think? Would it look better if I had like a giant... Um, mandala down here. Well, so that, that's what I was thinking when I had because I had suggested that because that's what I did on the shirt that you liked. So I did a heart on the chest, the upper chest, and then I did a mandala off to the side. And I had my mandala actually wrap around the side. Oh. Um, and then so I did that lower on this side too, and it wraps around. Oops, sorry, it wraps around the side. Do you think it's uh, dry enough? yet to oh i don't i'm worried that if i start moving it it's you know what i mean it's not quite dry enough yeah i, I would just leave that flat she used quite a bit of paint so i would just leave that flat okay so let's see <laughs> yeah because maybe because i could yeah like half like half of it on on the front and half of it on the back or you know kind of like that Okay, I like that idea. Let's see. Well, for this particular one, then until that one dries, because I probably should keep the cutting board under it. Um, let's see if I do one here. Okay, I don't really. Maybe maybe I can do one up here on the sleeve, or you know, like up on the shoulder. Well, let's see. This is a 3XL shirt, so there's room, there's room to play. Let's see. Well, this is fun. I think my cutting board is too big. Okay, well, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna leave that cutting board in there and I'm just gonna grab another cutting board and just stick it on in there. So and another technique Another textile paint that I use is um, from Pro Chemical and Dye. They make uh, fabric paint. So I've been using this one when I do my Galaxy shirts. I use this for my stars. And um, it's pretty good. So I'm getting to that for doing my stamp. And it's, it's a bit white, it's a bit white fabric paint. Is that what it is? It is. Okay. And so I'm going to scoop some of that out of here onto my uh, little palette. I have something over here that uh, the craft store suggested to me. I'm just, I've never opened it. Let's see. Oh, that's dye resist. Textile medium. Oh, this is the paint. Oh, anyway, textile, that's the fabric medium that helps it bond to the fabric you can add to other paints oh. that are not textile paints. That's what helps it spread, I think she told me. If I added it, I don't know. She gave me, it, it, I think it's tulip brand paint. It's fabric paint. And then she said, if I add this to it, this uh, I'm talking for making stars, that this is going to help it flow. So I, I haven't even opened it yet. So anyways, I'm, not, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get off topic. I was just you, you reminded me that I had something over there I've never even opened before. So if you end up getting some wood blocks like this, I bought mine off of Etsy, and you can just look up fabric printing blocks. But I've got a huge selection of them. Do I want to do the shell, or do I want to do... I cannot I've get this some... pack to open. 
life. What in the actual heck is going on here? It's a, it's a cellophane package, you guys. Why? Is, it's fighting me. Like, it does not want me to do it. Yeah, I found some of my stencils. They had, like, triple wrapped. There were three different packages you had to go through just to get the, to them. And it's like, what am I going to do to myself, you know, with these dangerous stencils? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Like, that just wouldn't come off. I had to use scissors. So anyway, so you load up your brush, but you don't want to get it too heavy because you don't want the paint to glob in between um, on the stencil. So I don't know if you can see the amount of paint that's going on there, but um, there'll be sort of little bumps that'll come up as texture on there. All right, so and you're adding it to the stamper and then adding it to the... Um, and, then, and then stamping the shirt. So I just make sure that I've got a nice even covering that's not too thick. Now this is a brand new uh, block, so I haven't used this one before. So hopefully this will work well. I like that. And so when you go to uh, block print things, I've got a towel underneath this and you wanna make sure that you've got, if you're using a wood block, your surface needs to have a little bit of give to it. So because it has a towel underneath it, the fabric can, sort of move down underneath it. If I was using a rubber stamp, a rubber stamp wants a firm surface underneath because the rubber stamp has some give to it, if that makes sense. Right, yeah, because it, yeah, because you can smoosh it and have it move. I mean, it, make, it makes sense to me. And, you know, I just tried to open the silver paint again. I have to remove this thing. I don't care. It's My paint's probably going to dry out. But every time I try to open it, that thing is causing me nothing but grief. I, I foresee getting through this paint long before it has a chance to dry out. It's taking a lot more than I thought it was going to. And then you, once you put your block on, you want to make sure that you cross it really well. And you'll, you'll feel the surface underneath give way. And then you pick it up. And there it is. Down. So there it is. I, I hate this. So that's probably a bit of a pale color choice to go on this. I was having a hard time deciding what to do. Like down here, I added some sort of greens and aquas to it to make it pop on there because there were other greens and aquas in the shirt. So I might go back in and uh, hand paint over that a little bit. Maybe I'll even fill in the rest of the Nautilus shell. I don't know. Well, I think it looks good. And if you have, I mean, it does, it's not showing up a lot, but, you know, maybe if you had like another one next to it in a slightly darker shade, it might draw your eyes in or something. I don't know. It's, it's super cute. It is cute. No, um, your, your shirt's getting super industrial. I just, I don't know what size... I don't know what to pick. I don't know what to do. I've got so many to look at. I'm like, ah, oh, what do I do? I think I'll put yeah. one right there. Are you going to do one of the big mandalas? Well, um, I am going to do one of the big ones, but I thought maybe I'll do a little one kind of up on the shoulder, like, like stagger it out. I, I don't know. Let me see. I think Maybe a good idea is to kind of map your stencils out a little bit. Maybe like lay them down and get an idea of how you want it to look. Or maybe I should do a little one up there, a couple little ones. So, well, that one's going to wrap around, so it'll only be half a stencil there. Oh, there's just too many choices. That's what I've done to myself. But I feel like it's it needs something. I feel you like it just... You could just do it all the way on the front down there. If you don't want to have it wrap around the side, you could always just apply it to the front there. Well, I like the idea of it wrapping around. I kind of think because it'll give some interest on the back. And then once this is dry on the back, I can, you know, put another one. I, I mean, I like the idea of it. That's so pretty right there. I'd hate to cover it up. But I just feel like, I don't know. If I just have the two, it might not be enough. Like I need to have... Well, screw it. I'll just, I'll just go, I'll just put another one on the back. I think it's, it's all going to look pretty. 
Okay, so I'm going to set up now to do the ironing demonstration on the other shirt while you're stenciling, if that's all right. Perfect, of course. So I'm just going to move this. Or, you know, I think off camera, I, I think it would feel better if it kind of wrapped around the back. So I need to do, or maybe I should, oh, I know, a, just like a really small one. I've got more of these mandalas, just where the heck are they, you guys? Like they're, I have stencils everywhere. But I really like this one. I don't want to miss out on that one. So yeah, uh, the decolorant, she's going to demonstrate its magic. It's really cool how you can just see your pattern pop up. I have that uh, fancy lady uh, where you can see it, and it just it's, I reverse dyed a black shirt, and it's really super cool. But I used the the spray on that one. Did you guys, uh, if you're here, did you guys receive your stencils yet? Uh, the two winners from last live that we did. I hope you guys got your stencils. Um, I thought I had more mandalas. Well, shoot. Would a flower look good? I don't know. Oh. Shoot. All right. Well, let me, let me look in here real quick. I don't even know who's here. So, um, yes, Barb, I will be putting the links for the stencils down below. Um, uh, I, well, I got, I have a lot of stencils. I will, I will put the links for the stencils that you see me using down below. And I'll put the ones that I recommend that are good. And then from there, you guys are on your own because there's just so, so many uh, stencils to choose from. So let's see, Let me go back here. Just see if there's any questions that I missed or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, Let's see, a steal your face stencil. But yeah, I, you know what? I, I tried to find one because I thought, well, that would be such a great idea to put the stencil on and tie dye around it, but you can't find it. But I did find ice cube trays that have the lightning bolt, you guys, and the dancing teddy bear. Like, how cute would that be, right? Okay. So I think for this one, I'm going to set it aside. I want to do better work on it and I can't do it right now. Like I need to let this dry. Oh, and I put all that paint down though. Okay. No, uh, I'm torn. I, it might, it's uh, my art. I'm just torn here. What am I going to do? So um, when I go to iron this, I place something to go between my iron and the shirt. Because this stuff is stinky, I'm hoping that that will help minimize the amount of stink that gets in my iron. Oh my God, it's so terrible. It's, it is, it's just beyond. Like It doesn't even make sense. It smells so bad. So uh, I, I, I did them all over the front of the shirt. So there's several of them to pop up here. Yeah, and it's, you guys watch, it's like super exciting. Like it just, it pops up out of, out of nowhere and it's really intriguing. Oh, it's doing some interesting things on the colors here. Unexpected things. Oh. <laughs> Science. Good, good thing, bad things. Because I've got that delay, so I, everybody's seeing it before me. And, you know, sometimes I, it's hard to tell how much coverage I'm getting, but also, you know, maybe I don't develop it fully and I leave it like that because I think that's kind of cool. It's sort of a... Oh, there it is. I it. Okay. Ooh. Isn't that interesting? That's and it brings some of that red color up into the blue. I can't even believe that it removed the blue like that, though. Like, blue is, like, the most difficult color to deal with. Like... Wow. And, and I'm very surprised that it turned that red color. I have no idea why that happened. Well, I like the fact that it did, though, because it ties the other bronze into the pattern. Like, it's perfect. In my opinion, I think it's looking pretty amazing. It's, it's really interesting. 
the, the other right. thing that happened on this one, and I think it must have been from where the rubber bands were at, but some of the blue and white areas had these lines in them. I have no idea why that happened either. See, at first I thought you were doing sunflowers, but I realized now it's the um, the pattern on your towel. <laughs> I was like, oh, I can already see it. There, you know, it's it, there, it's showing up. That is so interesting that the sky blue is turning that red color. Isn't I, that interesting? I I like it. I see. I, uh, I haven't seen the second one yet because I'm on that delay. But I mean, for me, I think. I think it uh, really draws and ties things together. It makes it really uh, cohesive. Okay. All right, now that one, I'm having a harder time seeing the stencil than I can on the first one. I will bring it up close to the camera once I'm done with this How do you know one. where everything's at? You just remember? Or did you mark it off? or? Well, so I could actually, I can see them a little bit. Um, you can kind of see the, the color, dried to color it on the surface. This is so wild. I've never had them turn red like that. Look at that. <laughs> that is so crazy. I love it. I so wonder if it's something about... Like maybe some of the red dye from the um, uh, Enchanted Sunsets. I, I don't know. Well, I but think. Cool. Oh, there you go. Okay, now that one really popped. Yeah. Okay, now that one's exciting. Like, I, I really see that one show up a lot. Um, I, li I, I like it. Are you, I mean, how are you feeling? Are you are you okay? Do you feel happy about it, or is it? Oh, I, I do. I'm I'm just a little flabbergasted. I'm like, wow, why is that happening? And the other thing I wonder about is what's going to happen when it's laundered, um, like if it will change color. Um, I know I've had some shirts that when I go to iron them, it looks like it turns completely white, but then I launder them. And when they come out of the dryer, they've turned back to a pale blue. Interesting. Well, yeah, because maybe it's hot right now, you know, like, you know, the heat from the iron is making it maybe turn. I don't, I don't know. Um, like, I did mine on the black shirt. So I, I was attempting to do a reverse dye and it turned a, like a, the golden mauve, you know, the typical reverse dye color. Um, yours is having more of a bronze color, but I think, I think it's because you have bronze in the dye underneath. Yeah. I, yeah. But like, I, maybe it's um, some influence that's coming from um, the evening sunset. Uh, enchanted sunset. Enchant yeah. The enchanted sunset. Now, uh, I think Enchanted Sunset's really pretty. I think, though, it looks like you know you did the shirt all by itself. I, I definitely think it, it looked so much prettier alone. Um, oh, yes. I've got that shirt right here. Um, so, so this wait, color that did all this crazy interaction with the blue, this, that, this is Enchanted Sunset by itself. Yeah, I, in the two applications that I've seen you do, and I'm just being straight up and honest, you know, I, I prefer it, the color in your single dye, uh, what, what versus the, the assault to your eyeballs. <laughs> well, I, I think I would agree with you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, look at, look at what a difference it is by itself. Now that is a striking shirt. It doesn't need anything else. It's perfect by itself. So, it, it's a really cool color. The way that it's get these pink touches of purples and the, the golden yellows. It's a really beautiful color. Yeah, it is. It's very soft. Um, the, the pastels to it, you know, especially for this time of year right now with spring and Easter and everything. I think it's perfect. I think, you know, it's so strange because like, look at how much the blue made it look so different. Uh, you know, having the blue take up a space, you know, it, it didn't need to spread itself out and it's so much darker on this 
you know, the one you're ironing than it was when it just had room to do its own thing. So it's well, like two totally this, different colors. This shirt on the blue, this one with the blue was done dye under ice, whereas that one was done dye over ice over the oh. spherical ice. Oh, yeah. Well, that definitely that all, obviously also may, makes a huge difference. I'm going to I'm going to play with her dyes and I'm going to do dye under and dye over watercolors because I know they're going to look different. Um, okay. I've already forgotten. So um, I'm going to I'm going to go away. I need to let this heart dry. So this little stamper, will it wash out? Like if I put it in a cup of water right now, will it soak or does should I just the 30 cents that it costs just toss it? Oh, no, I washed mine out and reuse it. That one I was using tonight, I've used several times. Okay. Um, it's the only one I have left of that size because my cat keeps stealing them. They're his new favorite toy. Oh, <laughs> that's cute. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. Oh, we got to love our little helpers, right? Indeed. <laughs> All right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set this one off to the side so it can dry because I want to get more fancy with it. Like I could just start, you know, tamping on stuff all over the place. Um, I do want it to look nice. I now I kind of wish I would have put the heart up just a little bit higher, but whatever, it's fine. It's going to look fantastic. And whoever ends up wearing it is going to be so happy. Okay. So there it is. That, that is all the reaction I'm going to get out of those because I went over it several times and I think that, well, let me try this just a little bit more through there, but I think that there's just, there's not, not there's not a lot of dye there, but also I did a colorant, I think is a little thin through there, but I'll see if I can get a little more reaction out of it. No, I think it looks great. I, you know, it's subtle, you know, you, it, and you could even, excuse me, if you wanted to, you could then do a, a like a paint stencil, even if you needed to, you don't need to, but um, oh, I, think I, it's some old action. I think those little peaks showing through the little, the peak of the decolorant is it's just enough to where, you know, it, it adds um, detail and dimension to it without it being overpowering. It will help break up that uh, that blue the, that you know it's it's yeah that blue that needs breaking up because it's so intense. Yeah, no, I I agree. Um, it's again, I I said it in the beginning. I struggle with the blues. I'm I love the color blue, but I when it comes to dyeing with them, ice dyeing with them, they don't they don't really fascinate me a whole lot because they're just they are blue like. You know, some of them do fun things, but for the most part, they're just like, you know, it's a pretty blue, but it's not like doing a lot. Have you played with Mystic Blue yet from Happy Cat? No, I don't think I have that one. I, I have to show you the coat I just washed out today that I did in that. It is really something. Um, I did a bucket dye with it. I'm going to move this. So this is a really great set, you guys. Also, I'm super happy with the quality. They're big. Uh, let me get my ruler out. Um, this is a 11 and a half. So the big ones are 11 and a half. But like, look. So on this shirt, which I consider to be like the ocean, remember me saying, I could somehow position this whole little set of turtles and make it look like they're, you know, traveling through the islands. Um, but if I didn't want to do all of them, I could do a big one or a little one. I'm definitely going to link this down. But then, like, look at the starfish. It's amazing. I'm glad to have this because I want to make some beach bags. And I think putting the starfish on there is going to be awesome. I think it'll be a great seller. But look at this turtle. Well, it's hard to see. I've got stuff everywhere. But I'm sorry, Margo. I just, I want to show off these stencils really quick. I'm going to put the link down below, but like, look at that sea turtle and the detail in it. And then here's a, net, a different one. So I think your camera may have frozen because uh, uh, your shirt with the heart. Ow. Let me see. Oh, my battery must have died. Thank you. Thank you for telling me. You're welcome. So, so 
Um, I, you can still hear me though. So you yes. guys, out of all of my sea turtle sets, I'm definitely going to link this one. Oh, down don't to see it. Um, this one has these two giant, gorgeous seahorses. That's really why I wanted to get it was these two big seahorses. Because imagine, you know, you got this big shirt with a bunch of not so good looking stuff. Oh. You put a gorgeous seahorse here and then maybe a starfish over there. And then when you get one of your other little packs, it's got some seashells. And that's what I'm going to do to this shirt. I'm going to totally just make it into an ocean vibe. But I love that seahorse. Imagine this starfish, like this starfish on one side of a beach bag. And then, you know, on the other side, you put the sea turtle. I think you guys, people would eat that up on uh, Etsy or wherever you sell your stuff. So I'm definitely going to link the set. And there's so many different size sea turtles. One, two, three, four five, six, six turtles and four seahorses and two starfish. All right. All right. Off, off topic. Okay. Going back to it now. Yeah. Look at that jacket though. So that's the mystic blue. That is happy cat mystic blue. Yeah. That, that is beautiful. It's got so much dimension. There's sort of a, a pinky purpley color here and a teal and then it gets into aqua, but then there's dark blue. Like it does a lot of things. So that's and, my new favorite blue. And gray. Or well, it looks gray um, from my view, but it looks like it looks I see gray, I see lavender, I see turquoise um from my camera. And that's just one color. That is just one color. Yeah. Oh Amanda <laughs> Angel, what are you gonna do to me? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean that's you know, that as eye that. buyers, that's what we want. We we want to see nothing but color splits. And so, you know, I will say this, you guys, her dyes are more expensive than one jar of Dharma. But look at how many colors you get out of one jar, right? So instead of buying three jars at five dollars a jar. You buy one jar for $10, so you're, like, getting two, we, you know, you're getting one jar, but, like, it, the price, two for one, right? It's two first. <laughs> yeah, that was gorgeous. Are you going to do any stencil work on that, Margo? Are you just going to leave it the way it is? Oh, that coat, I'm leaving as it is because yeah. I love the flows on it, and I, I love all the colors. I, I'm really happy with it as it is. Yeah, I'm I'm super happy with it the way it is too. Beautiful. And that was an upcycle. I bought that coat last summer at Goodwill. For I like eight dollars. No, I love that. You just gave it, you know, new life. And you know, go, the fact that it has to go through the dyeing process, it's like it's brand new again. You know, people might say like, "Ew," you know, it's it's used. You know, like young stupid kids, right? Like, oh, it's used. No, once it goes through the dyeing process, the pre-wash, the dyeing process, all the wash afterwards, it is brand new again. Like if there was BO stains, you'll never know it. They're 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 gone. Yeah. I know, it sounds crazy, but I mean it's true. Okay. Somebody said that this shirt has uh Hawaiian shirt vibes, and I can see that. It totally has Hawaiian shirt vibes. Completely. Um, because I mean, it, it's ocean water with land masses and then the mandalas that you put on it look like flowers. Yeah. Um, you know, to me, um, like that would be pretty on mine too. Like a, a, a turtle, like a family of turtles swimming through the ocean. Obviously they're going to be bigger than the land mass, but it's, you know, it's the whole idea of it. Like uh, sea turtles over here, and then maybe some hibiscus over here, and some seashells over there, and yeah, I mean, I I'm not gonna do it now, but I I for and I think on this one I should do, I'm thinking about doing it in gold to match the um, enchanted sunset. Oh yeah, I mean, I guess I could do it in silver. But I, for some reason, this the shirt to me. I have blue though too, but I don't think blue like uh, what was it? Metallic blue. 
I don't I don't think the metallic blue would show up as much, but maybe some gold sea turtles swimming through the ocean would. I don't know. I'm excited. Well, and um, you could also try the decolorant on that, although I wonder if you would end up getting that same orange effect that I'm getting. Which would also be, well, I just said a, a, that, blah, blah, blah. I just said that I wanted gold so that it doesn't look orange to me, but I, I'm also seeing it through the camera. Like to me, it looks like reverse dye kind of a bronze color. And I think it's really complimentary. But yeah, like uh, if I did the re reverse dye turtles through here and they turned out that bronzy color, I would be happy with it for sure. Yeah, that could be really cool. Yeah. I got to do something with it though, because this is also assaulting my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, it's cool, but it now it's, it, it's like an art installation. It needs something more, you know, to, I don't know, just to make it pop a little bit more. So I love it. I love it. Let's see. All right. All right, Margo, are you doing any more stenciling? I'm trying to keep this so that we're we're not going to be running too long. You guys, I can't believe that we were live for four hours last time. I was having so much fun. I didn't even realize. I like really I had no clue. And then I was texting Margo afterwards, like saying thank you and all that. And she's like, it's 10 o'clock. I've got to go to bed. I'm like, oh my gosh. Like I was so excited. I didn't even realize how late it was because I, I was having so much fun. Yeah, so, I, I think that we've kind of gone over everything. So I, I'm not sure that um, I think we, I've demoed the stencils and I've demoed how the decolorant and the decolorant stencils on exactly the same way as you would do the paint. Yes. Um, I, and I, I scoop the gel out onto one of the little lids and I tamp my sponge brush into it to try to load it so that it's it's not too wet. And you, you'll find that you'll there's like a certain amount of uh, dampness to it that you need to get it to transfer onto the shirt, but not so much that it squishes under the edge of the stencil. That is so pretty. My gosh. Like, really, that shirt turned out. I love that so much. too. I wish I'd made it in my size. Yeah, no doubt. Like for real. I, I mean, that's <laughs> really, it really is beautiful. What are you doing there? What are you, are you, are you just demonstrating or were you putting it on with your fingers? Uh, put, oh, we, put well, we've got that delay. All of a sudden I just saw you touching like a, the lid with your fingers and rubbing it on the shirt. And I'm like, what is, what's happening? Oh no, I was just demoing what I would do with the uh, stencil brush. Oh. Um, with the decolorant. I got it. Yeah. I wish we didn't have that delay, but yeah, no, I would leave that thing alone. It's so pretty. Like it's, I just, it's gorgeous. Fantastic. Yeah. So, I just put it down. So there was something on the table. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I, I've got the gel. Here's the, the decolorant and I'm going to be making some videos using it, you know, upcoming. I, I can't guarantee that I'm going to make it tomorrow, but I have it. Um, if you want to see like a video with the color spray, you can look at the, my lady stencil one where I talk about it in more depth, but you just watched Margo do it. So you don't really need to go back and look at it, but you know, like that, that's my goal. Like you see how gorgeous that shirt, that's the one that she was wearing. And you see how she was telling me about having it wrap around the side. So it's on the half is on the front, half is on the back. That's why I'm waiting for mine to dry because I want to do that same effect. I think it, I think it's going to look better having, um, well, it, and it's really flattering. It kind of slims the waist. Yeah, exactly. I like, I, I mean, I like that idea and, and I definitely want to do that. That's what I was thinking too. And I don't know, they must not have come, but I ordered, like I said, I ordered the wild, wildflower ones and they're big. They're like 12 inch stencils. So it would be. In my mind, I'm going to do like a gradient type shirt, like to simulate like the sky and then the horizon and then maybe green down at the bottom and then put the stencil, but have it wrap around the whole bottom of the shirt and then put like cute little butterflies and little, you know how like the dandelion, you know, you blow it and then it poofs out, like, do, you know, do some of that. And I want to find a fairy stencil 
you guys, trying to find fairy stencils that aren't just Tinkerbell is, is, it's impossible. I tried. I would love to have fairy stencils. So if you guys find fairy stencil sets, please let me or Margo know because I'm looking. So, well, thank I've you. Been, I've, I've been trying to figure out how to get my colors to show up more vivid like yours because my colors still look washed out on the screen. They're better than they were, but um, it is much more vivid than it looks here. Well, I think they look a lot better than they did with the black table. So okay. having the new white table, I think, is really having your colors show a lot better. Um, all of the other lights are off. So the only light I have on is my ring light. Yeah. I mean, I you know, I don't know. So for me, I've got the, like, it's just a shop light, two bulb shot light. And then I've got the... Um, as you can see that the sunlight that's coming in is actually making it really difficult to see, but it is nice and bright in here, but I have my ring light and I don't have anything special going on. Um, other than this blue, but you know, I'm looking at the screen. This blue is really bright, but it looks a lot. It looks a lot brighter on the screen than it actually is in real life. It's oh, okay. Um, it's a little, it's a little more deep blue. Let me see if I bring it up to the camera. These shirts feel so bad because I didn't use that Millsoft. I can't even stand it. They're like cardboard. Um, I mean, it looks, it looks like that blue, but it, it's a little more dark. I think because of the shadow, like you got the half in the light and half not. Um, yeah, even holding it up, it's still... It's just a really pretty, it's like baby blue. It's just a perfect baby blue. Uh, Margo, I think your colors look good. I think this is always going to be the bane of our existence, trying to photograph <laughs> things true. It doesn't matter. Like, I can take it outside, put it in the kitchen, on the floor, up high. I, I can never get it to actually look 100% like it really does. But, I mean, that's gorgeous. I love that. And that, was that gold or is that green? What? color was that stencil paint? I want to see if I have it. Oh, so this is, uh, I used the brown, the flat brown, and then I added some of the metallic gold to it. Oh, I don't have mm -hmm. flat brown. Um, wait on. So I had gotten um, a multi-pack of just the reg, oh, burnt umber. I'd gotten a multi-pack of just their regular paints. And that's what I was using on the industrial decay shirt was uh, I didn't use anything metallic on that. I used just the flat paints. Because, because from here it looks metallic. Yeah, this is just a flat paint. Okay. Because it, I don't know, to my eyes, it does look like it has a metallic in it, but. Oh, this one? It, it, well, and then I added some touches. Well, yeah. I added, I, there is a little bit of metallic gold in it. Yeah, and so. It, and it's, go I mean, it's really gorgeous because that, that's why I picked the one that I picked because it had the bronze with the metallic. I love shiny things. Um, uh, in that multi-pack, does it, you know, the one that comes with the little tubes. Oh, that's, that's, is that gold? No, that's the same shirt. Wow. Okay. It, it looks so layered. It looks so nice. It now, looks... It looks so professionally done, Margo. I'm impressed. Thank you. Love that a lot. Um, in in the yeah, okay. Is that the bronze? This this is the copper, metallic copper. I love this color. I used this on something else. And Ooh. I, and what? I totally love this color. I think you have this color. I do. Well, I have someone What do you on this uh the turtle shirt? My turtle shirt. Let me see. Where did it go? Um, I do have that bronze. Where did they go? Wow. What if I, instead of doing gold, if I do the bronze? Oh, that would be really cool. There would be almost like, like, like koi that shimmer underwater. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I've got the gold and then the metallic copper and then metallic bronze. So, um, yeah, you know what? I think the metallic bronze would actually look really good because I think it will go with the um, 
the mystic sunset w one of these two because the, me the metallic gold is almost too yellow i think yeah well although you know you could uh fill in the stencil you could use both and That's kind cool. of like give give it a little texture with that with both colors in there it would be really cool yeah uh, i want to answer a question somebody's asking yeah uh, they're asking so when we discharge uh, a shirt using jacquard uh do we wash it after we iron it yes yeah so because you have to wash all of that you have to wash that paste out um and then you'd sew to ash soak um if you were going to tie dye it again but you don't have to sew to ash soak after because you're you're doing the well it depends on what you're doing so yeah. like on this, we are discharging something we've already tie dyed. But if you're discharging a black shirt, then you would do your stencil so and you'd uh, iron out because it needs that heat to remove that to get that reaction to remove the dye. And then you wash it and then you do your soda ash soak and go through the whole tie dye process. Mm -hmm. One hundred percent. Definitely. And make sure at least in my personal opinion, you're not going to soak anything that has been worked with with decolorant in your soda ash bucket. I always pull off enough for the project. Well, I have like a reverse dye bucket, right? I do too. So I wouldn't want to take, even if it, it's like a little bit, you washed it, but what if? What you'd, I don't want to put decolorant into my so my regular soda ash bucket so all the special projects go in their very own um container so like typically what i'll do is you know, oh i'll take well i won't take this one it's a little bit big but like you know like my little ice bowl that you guys always see me use i'll pull a little bit of soda ash maybe a cup or two that shirt i'll stick it in there and i'll let it soak by itself and then i toss it i take it out to the yard and water a plant with it I do not want to cross contaminate and ruin an entire five gallon bucket just for one shirt. So that's my personal opinion. So, all right. Okay. Well, I, th I think that I'm going to uh, cut yeah. out here. If that's all right. Yeah, no, we're, we're done. So uh, thank you very much. I think we have the basics. You guys, uh, I'll link the stencils down below my, my favorite stencils. Um, happy shopping, you guys. I mean, you, you really <laughs> go choose your own, but the, the ones that I found that were my favorite, I'll link them down below along with the paints, the decolorant, you know, stuff like that. The, the sponge brushes. Um, thank you, Margo. I know that you're having some allergy issues and so you're, you're a trooper for showing up today. I appreciate it. And for all of you guys for tuning in, thank you so much. Um, thank you. I'm going to work on doing some more stenciling. Margo probably will too, um, but we don't need to do it all on camera. We'll be here all night. So <laughs> guys, well, uh, I hope you all have a really good week. And, Me too. And I really do look forward to seeing all of your stencil work, you guys. Um, make sure... Um, Make sure that you tag me and tag Margo. Uh, that way, you know, it, it brings us, uh, brings it to our attention because I, I don't have the time to be in the Facebook groups. I'm sure Margo doesn't either. So I want to see your work. And then Margo, uh, before we close, why don't you remind everybody your YouTube channel where they can buy your dyes, uh, you know, all, give, give them all of your information. Um, thank you. Uh, so. Um, my tie dye uh, website that I sell things on is margosdyes.com and it's M A R G O S D Y E S.com. And that'll redirect you to an Indie Made website, which I've really enjoyed using Indie Made to have my own sales website. Um, and uh, my YouTube channel, it doesn't have a whole lot on it yet, uh, but it is Margos Dyes. So well, I, I try to keep it all consistent. <laughs> there, yeah, no, consistency makes it really super easy. I'm belladonna across all of my things. It's easy to remember. Um, a lot easier than what it once was, which I think was like IXQUC789. <laughs> I don't know, you know. Right? So um, 
No, there isn't a lot on there yet, but you know, as time goes on, make sure you go after here, go over and subscribe to Margot's YouTube. Um, turn your bell to all because when she does upload, you won't miss out on it because we have a lot to learn from Margot, don't we? So Thank you. Christy, thanks humans. Yeah. What are you talking <laughs> about? Yes. We're humans. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thank you so much. Um, uh, you know, we're wrapping it up with Margot. Margot deserves a break. You know, I, I hope she'll come back and die with me again during the summertime at some point. Um, but, you know, if you guys want to do this with me, come on. You, somebody reach out to me and, and let me know that you want to do it because I'm ready. I'm not going to hunt you down. You should do it, guys. It's fun. It is fun. I love it. All right, guys. Good night. Thank you, Margo. I hope you feel better with your allergies. We'll talk Thank soon. You. Okay. Right, bye. Take care, bye. everyone. Good night. Bye -bye. Good night.